Hey there, welcome to another episode from Art Antics. Today I am painting a picture of a landscape scene from Letchworth State Park, located in Castile, New York. Actually, relatively near where I live, Western New York, also known as the Grand Canyon of the East. I was a little shocked when I first heard that it was called that, because here I don't think I've ever heard it called that, but I have to imagine it's so much smaller than the actual Grand Canyon, that that's a silly name. But anyway, it was established in 1907, more or less. It took it took some many years after it was transferred from Mr. Letchworth to the state before it really began to be organized by the state itself. Apparently, even then, government bureaucracy made everything take longer than it should. But anyway, Letchworth became part of the New York State Park system when William Pryor Letchworth gifted his estate to New York. He passed in 1910, I believe, and so prior to his death, he decided that he wanted to help preserve what he had worked to build during his life. But before that, Letchworth was something else. Before pioneers and colonials lived there, the indigenous peoples had a name for the place, Seneca named the place the Val of the Three Falls. And out of respect, I will not try and say the name in their language. Because I'm sure I can't. One famous inhabitant of this region, Letchworth State Park, was Mary Jemison, daughter of colonists aboard a ship to the New World. She was raised during the French and Indian War in what was then the western frontier around Pennsylvania. In the spring of 1758, her village was raided by French and Shawnee warriors. That raiding party carried on to Fort... um, It's French. Not 100% sure of the pronunciation, but Fort Duquesne. It's near modern-day Pittsburgh. At that point, they couldn't keep everyone they had held captive, and so I won't say what happened, but some were kept and some weren't. Mary Jemison was actually sold to the Seneca. She was taken down the Ohio River by canoe. She was accepted into the tribe and named Two Falling Voices. Another name I will not try to pronounce. There, she married, started a family, and towards the end of the French and Indian War, her husband was worried that during negotiations, he would have to give up his wife. So, out of the fear of that, he decided to move back to his homeland 700 miles away to near what is current day Letchworth. Sadly, he died on that journey. But she made it. She made it all the way to where he was taking her. She was taken in by her husband's family in present-day Kylerville, New York, heart of the Seneca Nation, Little Beardstown. Things were good for her there. She even remarried. But before too long, in 1779, George Washington's Revolutionary Army began trying to rout out tribes that were working with the British. The Seneca were one of them, unfortunately. While many left to find surrounding Seneca villages, Mary Jemison decided to find uh, decided to go to an abandoned Seneca village a little bit south called Gadaho. Not sure about the pronunciation. I'll put the spelling up. But it was a little bit south. Her husband even found her there, and they lived another 60 years 
She had six more kids, and all was well once again. Until speculators and pioneers came. Around 1797. Uh, At that point, a council was held at the Big Tree near Geneseo, New York. Now, growing up in the area, I know of the Big Tree Inn in Geneseo, New York, and Big Tree Road, which runs through much of New York, and I've always wondered why they're called those things. I guess now I know why. I don't know where that tree is, though. If anyone knows, please let me know. It would be awesome if that tree was still there. It was at that council that the Seneca had negotiations with settlers on land rights. And as was Native American custom, many women were part of those negotiations, including Mary Jemison. She helped speak up for the region she lived in and secured it as, and secured the area as the Gardeau Reservation, an area spanning about 18,000 acres. Mary Jemison continued to live in the area, even though it continued to become further industrialized and developed, uh, but She was well-respected by her neighbors, becoming known as the Old White Woman of the Genesee. In 1823, the Seneca gave up the Gardot Reservation, negotiating to leave Mary Jemison with what about was two square miles worth of land to live on. She stayed there for a while, but shortly thereafter, she sold her land and left to go uh, live at the Buffalo Creek Reservation. Two years later, she died. During her time in the Genesee Valley, Mary Jemison witnessed the transition of Native American-held lands. Ancient forests transitioned to the western frontier of the new United States. Industrial progress from the 1830s onward transformed ancient forests, leaving behind lumber-harvested woods and mills harnessing the upper and mid-falls of the Letchworth State Park Gorge. This is where William Pryor Letchworth comes in, a visitor to the area, seeing what the area has become, and imagining what came before. He was an entrepreneur. I believe he had businesses in Buffalo, New York. He purchased a plot of land uh, around Letchworth, what is now Letchworth State Park, and built a homestead there. And it's still there. It's known as the Glen Iris Inn. It's pretty cool to go and visit a cute little house right in that same spot in the winter time there's a blowhole that shoots water under pressure from the waterfalls right nearby and it freezes in a giant fountain so you end up seeing this gigantic cone of ice tower above even the house super cool the bridge you see here was actually known as the Old Portage Viaduct, or the Portageville Bridge, or the Portageville Viaduct. It was originally constructed in 1875 out of wood, which is terrifying. The same year, uh, a new bridge was constructed out of iron, and it lasted for 142 years before it could no longer perform its duties. It was at that point that a lot of people wanted to save it as a historical relic, but funding wasn't there. In October 2015, a new bridge was constructed, a spandrel braced bridge, which you see in this picture. And according to engineers that produced it, Um, It's actually an extremely unique bridge, as a spandrel-braced bridge is very well suited to railway uh, loads 
and not many places can actually support this particular type of construction. So it's, it's a really unique bridge in a really historically important area of the country and a beautiful area too. As far as this painting goes, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you follow me for more. This one, uh, it's watercolor. Uh, it was pretty much just a huge battle between figuring out values and trying to make the composition look as nice as possible um, with regards to the reference photo, which I kind of hope I did there. You can see from the video, I, I pretty much worked in pretty standard watercolor form, light to dark. I spent my time kind of focusing on where I needed to push values further and further. And so you see a real back and forth between my decisions to push one area versus another and, you know, decide it wasn't enough and then push it even further and... I think it came out pretty good, especially for a winter scene. Uh, I, you know, I tried to focus on keeping everything cool and limited in palette, and uh, towards the end there, I realized I had to add in some of that warmer component because it was it was just lacking something. But thanks for watching, friends, and visit Letchworth State Park if you get a chance. Thanks. And now a word from our sponsor.